الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. It was narrated that a Sayyida, our mother, Maymuna, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thank you, shukran, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, Ya Rasulallah, aftina fi bayt al-maqdis. Oh, the Messenger of Allah, tell us about the Holy Land, about Al-Quds. And when you say Al-Quds, means the Holy Land that part Palestine he said Ardul Mahshari Wal Manshar this is the land of gathering and of the resurrection this is the land of congregation of gathering and resurrection come to it or go to it to pray Idhabu Fasallu Fi فَإِنْ لَمْ تَسْتَطِيعُوا فَأَرْسِلُوا زَيْتًا يُوْقَدُ فِي قَنَادِيلِهِ So go and uh, be keen to go and uh, pray there. Why pray there, Ya Rasulullah? Because a prayer in the Masjid Al-Aqsa is 500 multiples of a prayer anywhere else except in Al-Masjid Al-Haram and Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi. So a prayer in Masjid Al-Aqsa is 500 times the prayer we have done today here. But in Al-Masjid Al-Haram, it's different. Al-Masjid Al-Haram is in 100,000. Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi is 1,000. In Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is 500. If you can't go, SubhanAllah, the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam knows that sometimes the Muslims may not be able to go. So he said, then send oil to let its uh, lights. Send oil to keep it alight, to keep it lit, to protect it, to keep the masjid alive, to keep the people of Jerusalem alive, steadfast and able to face the occupation and the Zionist crusades and all. Palestine is the land of gathering, the land of resurrection, as the Prophet وسلم, is the place of uh, accountability where Allah will gather everyone. The Prophet وسلم, said, so we don't know how, but it will, it will be. That is Palestine. Palestine and Al-Aqsa is the land where all the messengers passed by that place. All lived there. From Ibrahim alayhi salam and his children huh, to Muhammad, to Isa alayhi salam who was born there, our beloved, he's Palestinian, Isa alayhi salam. To Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who did not were gathered all together in the, uh, in the day of Al-Isra. When all the messengers were gathered together and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led them all in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Palestine, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is the land of the group that will always be steadfast and be on the truth. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the very common and famous hadith, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق There is always be a group of my ummah who is sticking to the truth. And they will have the upper hand inshaAllah. They said, yeah, where are they, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet, the companions, peace be upon them, used to ask these questions. And sometimes when they ask, they think they are the only huh, ones, the only good ones. Of course, they are the best ones, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here is saying, no, 
They, they are not the only good ones. Huh? There will be people coming afterwards who will believe in the Prophet. They are not companions, but they are as good. And they are everywhere. But in this case, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, singling out the group that is sticking to the truth while many people are not. They said, where are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Fi Bayt al -Maqdis. He said, in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem and around it. My brothers, Palestine is the land that's housing, that's containing Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is the third holiest masjid in Islam. But it's the second masjid also on earth. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is the first masjid on earth? Huh? What was the first place of worship in earth? What, uh, of course, the, what was the first masjid? Because all the messengers were Muslims in principle. So whatever they build is place of worship, we call it masjid. They used to call it churches, whatever. If it's a place where Allah uh, is truly praised and worshipped, it's a masjid. So whether that was built by Adam or Muhammad or Ibrahim or uh, Yaqub or Sulaiman or anyone. So Ya Rasulullah, what was the first masjid? He said Mecca, in Mecca, Al Masjid Al Haram, our beloved Al Masjid Al Haram here in Mecca, 870 kilometers from here. May Allah protect him. Al Masjid Al Haram, the first house built on earth, was built by Adam, of course. By Adam, then the companion asked, what is next? What was the second? He said, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Al-Quds, in Jerusalem, was the second house built for worship on earth, the second masjid on earth. He asked, how long between the two? Maybe a thousand years, a two thousand, four thousand? No, he said, 40 years. So Adam built the one in Mecca, and then 40 years later he built huh? Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the Masjid in Jerusalem, the one here in Al-Aqsa, where we know now. So in 40 years after Mecca, after Al-Kaaba, Al after Al-Masjid Al-Haram, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa was built. And it was our first Qibla. Right? The Muslims in Mecca and in Medina huh? we used to pray towards Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa right? you all know that, don't you? for, for many, many months huh? for many months for years for about 40 months, right? or more huh? the Muslims used to pray towards Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, our Qibla and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know in Surah Al-Baqarah, He said, Allah knows where to direct you. That was the Qibla. Huh? And it's still our holiest, our second, third, third holiest place. Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, where you pray there, it's equivalent to 500 elsewhere, except in Al-Masjid Al-Haram and Masjid al-Madina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah al-Isra, the chapter in the middle of the Quran. If you open Juz 15, you will be faced with al-Isra immediately. Where it starts by the, uh, saying that Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-Masjid al-Haram ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Glory to him who uh, gave this night journey to his servant from Mecca to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from Mecca to Jerusalem and then from Jerusalem to the heavens? Couldn't he take him from Mecca straight to the heavens? Huh? Every day happens, right? Jibreel used to come there every day, right? Straight to Mecca or Medina, right? He didn't have to pass by Jerusalem. Yeah, but the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tripped 
to the heavens went from Mecca to heavens through Jerusalem through Al-Quds so we Muslims never forget you should never forget this is the land where all the books were recited in Jerusalem all the books at Torah was Zabur well in Jeel well Quran all of them recited in Masjid Al-Quds in Al-Aqsa all these messengers lived inhibited that place and the occupation is keen to change the nature of Al-Quds to deport the Muslims and to bring these uh, scattered right Zionists from everywhere and put them in Jerusalem to make it look like Jewish to destroy the mosques you know the first thing they have done when they occupied East Jerusalem in 1967 they have done they destroyed the whole West uh, suburb of Al Masjid Al Aqsa the whole Western suburb of Al Masjid Al Aqsa where you know who lived in there all these Muslims who came from Morocco and the west side huh, to live next to the Masjid al-Aqsa at the time of Salahuddin to protect it from the Crusades they destroyed the whole that whole area and where they now use it for their so-called wailing whale whale which is part of al Masjid al-Aqsa these Zionists who have never respected any treaty that some people think we can have peace with them they never have any peace they never they never respected any treaty with anyone along the history and nowadays these are the ones who killed the prophets those who gave Allah attributes that are very insulting and improper those who call everyone else Gentiles are animals for them to ride and implement their plans this Zionist mentality can never be accepted and what happens a few days ago of another Zionist who's the head of the US now coming to support them is no surprise to Muslims that the conflict between Haq and Batil between the truth and the evil is imminent and if you think that one day this will end that means it's the end of this world it's part of the nature of this world that right and wrong will always uh, be in confrontation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if Allah wanted everyone would have been Muslims and also in another part he said if Allah wanted he would have destroyed the disbelievers but he's testing you with one another how you Muslims carry the message of Islam of peace to the world and you've got to be patient because not everyone is a peace loving person not everyone is welcoming huh, the truth many people have their own agendas and they have own desires and whims you've got to be patient with that if they commit atrocities will you do the same no you cannot do that you Muslims have limits Allah says let not let not the animosity of any group make you unfair or unjust be fair and just with everyone even with your enemies even with those who accuse you who prosecute you you're going to be fair with them so you Muslims are entrusted with that so Allah tests us and tests them the non-Muslims will they accept the truth will they come to common word as Allah said come to terms come to common grounds that we worship none but Allah that at least we stop sh shedding the blood and spreading mischief unfortunately this is the Zionist agenda whether it be in Jews or Christians who are Zionist and adopting that and you know what Philistine is the thermometer of the Muslims whenever we are okay Muslims are controlling that part and it's under their custody and when we are weak and fragmented our enemies are humiliating us 
by occupying our holy masjid over there. This happened before, and it's happened again now. But despair is not a trait of believers. A believer is trust, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this conflict is there, and Allah promised us an end of it. There will be an end of this and every conflict. But this specific one, go and read Surah Al-Isra, and you will come to the point is, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the children of Israel, amazingly. In Surah Al-Isra, after talking about Al-Isra, the night journey to Jerusalem of the Prophet, he's immediately talking about the children of Israel. And, the, uh, and their atrocities they're committing. And Allah says that one day you will come to a point that you have never reached. He's talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to the remnants of them. Those remaining ones, the Zionists of today. That you will come to a point that you will reach of authority and, uh, and effect that you never had before. But this will be the last and the end of you. And once that happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وَجُوهَكُمْ وَلْيَدْخُلُوا المسجد كما دخلوه أول مرة. When that happens, and we can see now, now Israel is now supported by the superpower, and now it's protected by them and by the UN, which is un under the guise of UN is only protecting Israel and the interest of the Western uh, mentality. But once that happens, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Wait then, when the." group Allah will give victory will re-enter the masjid like they have done before وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ and who will enter masjid but Muslims which masjid is the masjid al-Aqsa insha'Allah so don't despair don't think this is the end of it it's actually the beginning of the end of the evils the beginning of the end of the occupation and insha'Allah it's the beginning of the light coming back to that holy land to Al-Masjid. So, remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you cannot come to it, send some oil huh, to enlighten it. Send your dua. Send your huh, dua. Send your all the things you can do to support that place. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to protect Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and Al-Quds and Palestine from these evils. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to unite the Muslims and make this land safe and peaceful and all the lands. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli lahum wa barik ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.